What's up? My name is Tech Number here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be showing you the best settings for Armor Reforger in game to get you a ton of extra FPS. This video isn't going to touch on Windows optimization at all, unlike my previous optimization guides that do touch on updating Windows, GPU drivers, enabling game mode, etc. etc. If you'd like to do some Windows optimization, you'll find a Windows 10 and Windows 11 guide in the description down below, as well as an NVIDIA optimization guide too. This one's only going to focus on the in-game options, so we'll cut straight to the point. So I'll fire up Armor Reforger. I'll hit space to continue, close this window, and I'll head into the in-game settings here. We'll start on the video tab. The best place to start is the quality preset option over here. Select whatever option you think would be best for your computer. Running an RTX 3000 or 2000 series graphics card, you'll more than likely be fine on high, but for anything before that, I'd say start on medium. While we are going to be tweaking a ton of settings here for more FPS, this is the one that will get you the most FPS with minimal effort. Simply click between these and find what you're most comfortable with for both quality and FPS. Starting at the very top, window mode should be set to borderless full screen. There is no full screen option unfortunately, but this should give you the best FPS possible. Render scale should be set to 100%, otherwise things will start being blurry. And Fidelity FX Super Resolution should be turned off. You can turn this on later for a relatively big boost in FPS, though you may notice some visual quality change as it's upscaling things on your screen. So I'll leave this off for now. VSync should absolutely be turned off unless you're getting screen sharing where the top half of your screen doesn't sync with the bottom half. FPS limit should be disabled. Draw distance is fine at the default, whatever it is for you. Mine's at 2,500 halfway, which is good enough. If you find that you're struggling to see things at a distance, you may want to increase this or decrease this if you need more FPS. Nearby depth of field, I would turn off just as it helps you see things more clearly. Then post-processing. I would turn off anti-aliasing to get a huge boost in FPS and of course graphics fidelity. Same goes for depth of field. And the other options here are pretty much user preference. Ambient occlusion is something you can lower, but you can't turn it off entirely. And screen space reflections, unlike ray traced reflections, are super cheap to run on any computer. It's an ancient technology that's been done well for so long that having this turned on usually wouldn't cause any FPS drops. So I'll leave this on medium. Contact shadows should be turned off to get better FPS. Then scrolling down to quality, hardware anti-aliasing can be turned on if you'd like to have some kind of anti-aliasing in your game. And of course you can choose what it applies to, grass and trees, trees, grass, or none. While I would recommend turning off anti-aliasing almost always, hardware anti-aliasing should give you much better performance than normal anti-aliasing. So if you really hate jagged edges, this is something you can come and play around with. Of course, you can decide where it matters the most, grass, trees, or both of them, to get more out of the game. For me, I'll be leaving this off. Model geometric detail, I would leave on low. Otherwise, anything lower than this, things may look a bit plasticky. Object draw distance, you can leave on medium or high, depending on what's important to see in the distance. Usually, this doesn't affect players, it only affects objects. So, turning this down can help you see people further away, especially if they're behind objects. Terrain surface details, we can choose between shadows, HQ, parallax shadows, and of course, parallax. You don't really need to worry about this option here, but you can leave it on parallax for better quality. Texture detail completely depends on your graphics card. If you have a high-end graphics card with tons of VRAM, you can comfortably turn this up with no performance effect. If you have a lower-end graphics card, you'll need to turn this down to make sure that the game doesn't eat up your entire VRAM budget. Running a 3080 Ti, I can comfortably leave this on Ultra. For a 1080, I would leave this on Medium, and anything below a 1080, I'd set it down to Low. Then texture filtering doesn't really matter. Anisotropic filtering is super cheap and has almost no effect on graphics performance, but it does have quite a big effect on how the game looks. Grass detail, I usually turn down as grass isn't at all important to gameplay. It's just something to distract you and of course eat a ton of your FPS. On top of this, you can turn it down quite a bit to hopefully see things better in the distance. This is however, user preference. Shadow quality, once again, I'd turn down to the lowest as you're not always going to be staring at shadows. Same goes for distant shadows, which I'd set to none. Render target format, we can set to standard or high. I'm not too sure what this means, so I'll be leaving it on standard. Then environmental quality, I'll usually leave on medium for better performance without making things look too plasticky. 
This engine does work a ton better than the Armor 3 engine, and as a basis for Armor 4, things are looking really good. This tutorial should work well into the future, but of course, this is still a beta, or at least early access. So if things don't work properly, don't be surprised. The game being it just released already has great modding support and is something really good to see from a developer. I absolutely support any developer who wants to put in such good modding compatibility in their games. Unfortunately, I'm not able to join any multiplayer servers, so I'll hop back into the tutorial for a second time just to see how my FPS has changed. So there we go, I'm in game and as you can see, things don't look too demanding. The game is running really smooth as compared to before where I was getting a few FPS drops, though of course as the game is being worked on, things will get a bit more stable and work a bit better in general. Of course if you don't like the way things look, you're more than welcome to raise certain settings to make things better for whatever your needs are. One of the most noticeable things are the distant shadows for these trees for example, and that may be something you'd want to enable. Turning distant shadows to low, you can immediately see a huge difference in graphics quality, making the game look a lot better. So maybe having something like distant shadows set to low is what you're looking for. Anyways, how exactly do we track our FPS? Well, unfortunately, there isn't a way of doing this in game. The best way to do this is hitting shift tab on your computer to open up the Steam overlay. Then open the settings, head across to in game and enable the in game FPS counter. I'll set it to the top left and have high contrast color on. This way it'll be nice and green. And as you can see, I'm sitting at a solid 120, 130 FPS, which is really good, especially for an armor game running at 2K. Of course, I am running a super overkill computer, so you may have different results with you. But of course, that's really about it for this quick video. This is just a general guide. And once again, if you'd like even more FPS out of your computer, check the description down below for a super simple guide on optimizing Windows 10, Windows 11, and NVIDIA as well. So anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.